Welcome to this Weatherford Lifting Operation Safety Training video. This video is the first of a series dedicated to setting a high bar for safety in all WDI lifting operation activities. As such, this series of videos will provide all WDI personnel with the correct tools and information to carry out all lifting operations in a safe and controlled manner, and to do it in a way that causes no harm to anyone, or any damage to the environment or company assets. In any lifting operation, it is important to review Weatherford's eight gems for workplace safety. Specifically, the Lifting and Equipment Operations gem. The three important affirmations for this gem should be displayed and discussed prior to any lifting operation. They are, I will always inspect lifting equipment before use. I will always secure loads prior to movement. I will never stand in the path of a moving load. Remembering, honoring, and following this gem and all eight gems will create a safer work environment for everyone. In this section of the video, we'll discuss the processes for the proper planning of lift operations. The lift plan should control for every part of the lift, if the permit to work says so. Let's start with equipment selection. One of the first questions to consider is simple. Is the equipment suitable for its intended use? To understand the answer to this question, the team must consider the size, weight, and the nature of the product the team intends to lift. If it's small enough and within the capacity, use a forklift. If it's too large, bulky, or awkward, or it exceeds the capacity of a forklift, use a crane. Note that the team may use different types of accessories and attachments for different operations on the worksite. The correct lift plan must be developed prior to the lift, taking into consideration the load to be lifted and the equipment used in the operation. The lift plan should include a number of factors. The first is rigging. A lift plan should take into consideration the fundamentals of rigging and the variety of rigging gear to be used, including the components, their configurations, and their applications. And of course, the proper sling angles. Crane safety includes aspects of mobile crane operations, including equipment inspection, site hazard identification, and the required personnel protection equipment. To operate a crane, the approved crane operator must fully understand the basic functions of a crane, as well as standard procedures for starting up and shutting down. The plan should identify such a competent person. The required communications process used in the lift should be discussed in the plan. That includes verbal and visual instruction, identify who is involved in this process, hand signals, including the appropriate operator actions when the signal is given and the expected crane movement. Hand signals are stop, emergency stop, raise the load slowly, raise, lower, boom up, boom down, Extension in, extension out, swing, swing, finish operation. The lift plan should incorporate information from load charts and charts that apply to different configurations with different weights. It is very important that the lift plan address the movement of equipment on site. The lift plan should cover site hazards, and restrictions that could hinder on-site crane movement, safety considerations involved in crane movement over unleveled ground, pick and carry operations, and power line contact, addressing a safe distance of 10 meters to 25 meters, depending on the current voltage. Each person involved in a lifting operation has specific duties. 
the LIFT plan should address these roles and responsibilities and the personnel who will take them on. Let's discuss the basic roles and responsibilities of the LIFT team members. The lifting team, which includes slingers, signalers, and equipment operators. As well as any other roles identified as being necessary for the lift, bear a variety of responsibilities. They must attend and participate in pre-lift meetings, carry out pre-use inspections of lifting equipment, assess with the lifting operation, understand and act on regulatory requirements, and understand their responsibility to stop any operation if they are concerned about safety by exercising their stop work authority. Let's discuss the duties of the three basic roles involved in any lifting operation. The role of the slinger is critical to a safe lifting operation and the role begins before the lift even begins. It is the slinger's responsibility to select the correct lifting equipment for the job. Every piece of equipment used must be suitable for the lifting operation to be undertaken. By choosing and correctly attaching the proper equipment, the slinger ensures that the gear being used is rated to the exact lift. The attachment to the load is secure and the load will remain stable throughout the lifting operation. After the initial plan, the signaler must keep the work area free from potential hazards and dangers, including personnel who may enter the area of the lifting operation. The signaler should have a clear understanding of how the crane and its load will move throughout the lifting operation, ensure that the lift plan reflects those movements, and work with the lift team to ensure that the movements are properly followed to ensure a safe lift from beginning to end. The signaler's role is to provide clear, concise, and meaningful hand signals to the crane operator while taking into consideration different language barriers. It is extremely important that the crane operator and the signalers discuss the signals intended for the operation before commencing the lift. Every member of the lifting team, crane operator, signaler, banksman and slinger must have appropriate, practical and theoretical knowledge for the lift to be undertaken. That means that they should have enough experience of the load to be lifted to be considered competent for that particular job, as well as experience with and understanding of the lifting equipment to be used. It is not enough to simply understand one or another. Every load is different, and to ensure a safe working environment, lift team members must be competent to lift each proposed load. A risk assessment involves creating a matrix that takes into account each potential variable and vulnerability that may be associated with a risk. Before the lift begins, each lift should include a risk assessment to determine whether or not it is a routine or non-routine lift. But remember, even routine lifts should include a process of checking the nature of the lift against those lifts and visions in the routine lift plan. As you can see, it's crucial that every role on the lift team is properly filled, that every member of the team is competent in their role for lift operation under consideration, and that a proper risk assessment is performed to ensure that the lifting operation may be performed safely. If each of these standards is not met, it is crucial that the lifting operation be stopped and a new plan developed that meets these basic requirements. In this section of the video, we'll discuss the importance of the daily pre-task meeting or toolbox talk and introduce the best practices for conducting one. 
Once at the work site, the competent person should review the findings of the risk assessment and approve the lift plan with the lifting team at the pre-lift meeting or toolbox talk. Individual responsibilities should be allocated to each person involved in the lifting operation, together with clear identification of the lift supervisor. The risk assessment and lift plan should be discussed in a step-by-step -step manner to ensure that everyone clearly understands and agrees with the methods and control measures to be used. Care should be taken to ensure these steps follow the guidelines outlined in the BMS. Using a lifting safety pocket card as a guide, questions raised by anyone involved in the lift should be discussed and accounted for within the risk assessment and lifting operations plan. If there is an agreed change to the risk assessment and or the lift plan, the documentation should be amended and re-approved by the competent person. Points to be discussed in the toolbox talk include the following. The objective of the job plans and methods, responsibilities, access and evaluation, work environment, task risk assessment and job hazard analysis, permit to work, personnel protective equipment, equipment, materials, conflicting activities, motivation, communication, and this should include any other safety-related topics as well.